Welcome back to the channel guys, hope everyone's doing well. So today we're going to talk about these, Heltec wireless capsules. I said they were going to be turning up at some point. And for those of you who don't know what these are, these are basically Mesh-tastic devices. They run Mesh-tastic firmware. Um, and Mesh-tastic is an off-grid messaging system that allows you to connect these to um, a Bluetooth smartphone or you know any smartphone basically. Um, and you can send messages um, without the internet to other people with these devices. So it's super cool for like kind of off-grid communication, um, places where there's no cell coverage, you know, emergency situations. But the, the cool thing about Mesh-tastic is that it uses um, a mesh networking um, sort of technique. So the more devices you've got of these in an area, they'll all mesh together and your messages get passed through. So the more of these devices are out there, the better and the network in the UK at least has taken off massively at the moment you can look look for more videos on that especially on this channel I'll link some more below if you want to learn more um, but this is a new device from a company called Heltec which are pretty um, kind of prolific in 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 sort of the mesh tastic world um, very very well known and yeah we're going to take a look at this today so if we open up the box we can see that this is an all-in-one unit so this has got a LoRa radio built in, um, and that is obviously what these these devices, all, all the mesh tastic is, it, it runs on LoRa WAN. Well, it's not LoRa WAN, it's actually LoRa in a kind of peer-to-peer -peer mode. But basically, um, in here, you've got a LoRa radio, you've got um, an ESP32 chip, microprocessor you've got a gps chip as well so these would these location track as well yeah and these are absolutely brilliant they've got so much technology packed in so the way you start with these things is you just literally put your finger over the top of there and there's like a little sensor underneath which fires up the device and you can see the led um, comes to life and that is now on so what we can do is we can get a smartphone with the uh, mesh tastic app and um, what you can do here is you can just search for it. Now, some of these other ones are, are mine. I know these numbers anyway, but you can pair it with the smartphone. Now, normally on these sort of mesh-tastic devices, they have a little screen and it will show you a, um, a your PIN number. Now, obviously, these don't have it, but I've worked out they're preset to one, two, three, four, five, six. It's pretty, pretty obvious. Um, and you should probably change that once you kind of get into... Uh, the device but anyway it's going to go through this sort of process of kind of pairing and setting up and there we go now i have already set this one up so um its region is set to eu868 which is what you want to use in the uk um there's lots of other regions you can see here which you can you can choose but 868 is the one we want for the uk you can also give them the node a name as well here um, I'm just going to leave it all as stock settings just to sort of test this out. Um, but that is basically it. Um, and then you can go on to the, the main screen. When you set these up for the first time, you probably won't see all of these. These are all nodes in my area um, that are running on similar devices to this. So there's lots to this. As I say, I've got done loads of videos about this so far. And you can see how to set one of these things up and some of the other features that you can do with it. But yeah, from here, we can see it's working. Um, we can go to the public channel here and you can see, you know, there's been some sort of other conversations happening on here. It's a bit like the old CB radio days. You can just chat to people on, on a public channel. So let's have a closer look at this little device then. So as I was saying, this is kind of normally what a, what a mesh-tastic node looks like, um, you know, in its most basic form. This is from the same company, Heltec. This is a uh, V3 uh, lower 32 board and you can see it's got a display on there as well but this is what everybody's been using um, of late the good thing about these is that they do have an external antenna connector so you can connect different antennas to them um, but yeah this is basically very very popular and it's probably struggled to get hold of these now because it's been so popular effectively though this is just sort of like a different version um, to this this will have different use cases this casing is supposed to be waterproof and this is more of an end user product you haven't got to kind of print a 3d case or anything like that this comes as is so to charge it it's got this kind of magnetic charge port at the bottom that reminds you of something like you know apple do um, and you get this little usb lead here which you can use to just click on there it'll only go one way <laughs> otherwise it kind of freaks out with the magnetism um, and that will then charge now there has been some sort of questions about battery life on this thing because esp32 devices don't generally have very good battery life um, and i know that heltec did say in the original video 
Um, these were going to start off with ESP32 and then they might move on to like another chipset, which is a lot more efficient. It'd be good to see that because uh, I don't know how long these are going to last. We're going to have to test, test them out. Now, you might have noticed that these devices do not have a USB-C port. So how do you update the firmware? Well, the good news is these do come with MeshTastic pre-installed, so you can get going straight away. When it comes to updating firmware, you need to do it by Wi-Fi. The process is slightly different to the normal MeshTastic website flasher, but it is still pretty easy. So yeah, that is practically it for the for the device. You've got a lanyard on here, which is pretty good because the GPS unit is directly below here. I'll take it apart in a minute and show you. Um, but that would make sense. The lanyard, it's swinging around like that. This would be great for a drone. You could literally just, you know, hang this off of a drone. That would be really good. Or, you know, a bag if you're going walking, all, all sorts of stuff, really. So let's rip this apart. I know you guys want to see what's inside. So there's just two screws on the ends here so we're just gonna whip them whip them out nice and easy and then we pull off the end cap and you see here gps antenna pretty cool um right underneath and as i was wondering these two pads here they make contact with the charging so you can actually kind of yeah see how that works so to get it out i have taken part one of these before and you can see this is the device and we can already see on the back here well it looks like a big capacitor but it's not it's actually a pretty small battery 200 milliamp hours i'm pretty sure they say it's 280 but it's a, a, a lithium ion battery there you can see and um so yeah we'll have a closer look here but yeah it is a very neat little device there's the esp32 microprocessor there you've got an over air W01 Wi-Fi antenna, Wi-Fi Bluetooth antenna, probably dual. I would have thought these can only operate one one at a time, um, either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So um, that would make sense. And this sort of this is interesting, isn't it? This is sort of like a capacitive. Is it a capacitive kind of um, on-off switch, something like that? And this bit here looks like the LoRa antenna. So that is actually nice and up there. In the top of the casing obviously it'll be upside down if this thing's hanging by the lanyard but yeah interesting um let's turn this off and you can actually attach detach this um this gps board so it's got this little connector there and a bit of tape um you can see here that's how it connects on with that little connector so if we just remove this double-sided sticky stuff i'll put some new new stuff on so that right there is the gps chip so quectel l76 um k that's a, a sort of multi-purpose gps chip you've got there um and you can see they've called this the capsule gnss v1 so this is sort of the idea with this you can connect other modules they'll probably be like thermometers barometers you know um, air purity meters things like that lots of different sensors for different things i think that's generally the idea but as of now i think the only one that's available is this uh, this gps one so if you look closely in there you can see the center sx 1262 it is in this one um, so this kicks out the same amount of power as the others um, 21 dBm, which is about 120 uh, milliwatts, something like that. I've tested some of these as high as about 140, but um, it's going to be difficult on this one because we've got this, obviously, this built-in antenna. Although well, it wouldn't be too difficult to put another antenna on here. Um, you could easily desolder that um, and put, you know, an SMA, and maybe have the SMA on the top of this case in here. I don't know. Just looking at this a bit closer, that looks like it could be the ground plane, doesn't it, for the antenna? So maybe that actually means that um, that is, you know, this is the top, this this mark here. So basically, when it is hanging from the lanyard, that antenna is actually facing upwards. I don't know, but there'll be experts in the comments that can uh, comment on that. Anyway, let's put this thing back together. Stuck a new bit of adhesive on the top of that GPS chip, and then snap it back in. Might be a bit overkill that adhesive. It's proper strong that stuff. <laughs> Oh, and it's fired up. So just slot it back together. Goes all the way in there. Ta-da! 
So guys, quite an interesting little device then. I think it's really good that companies are making new devices uh, for Meshtastic and it's definitely moving the game on a bit. We've got something that's actually more like a sort of finished product now and you know, you could even give this to someone that wouldn't didn't really know much about it. They haven't got to worry about antennas. I mean, we are going to have to test the performance of these onboard antennas to see what the performance is like. But I would hazard a guess they probably will work quite well, especially in a high location, like maybe hung from a drone or something like that. It is a shame that they've used an ESP32 microcontroller. Maybe they just had excess stock and they just wanted to get those out of the door um, first. But I think later on, like I say, they have mentioned in their video that they will be using um, a more uh, power efficient microcontroller um, for, the, for a device like this. I mean, ESP32 with GPS, yeah, that's going to suck some power. And as we've seen inside, printed on the side of the battery, 200 milliamp hours is not going to last long. I would say it will probably last maybe an hour or so, maybe less. But again, I'll be testing that out in another video. I will say the Bluetooth performance has been very good. In the few tests that I've done with this today, I was inside the house and this was at the bottom of the garden and it was working absolutely fine. Now these seem to be available at the moment on Helltech's website for $25.99, which seems pretty reasonable. But the problem is at the moment, the shipping cost is saying $38. I have questioned Helltech about this um, and they said that they have done something with the price, but I, I think it was even higher than that. But you won't have to worry about that soon because we will be getting these into the Meshtastic UK store, which is soon to launch. And we'll have all the popular Meshtastic compatible products on there available from the UK. Anyway guys, hope you've enjoyed this little run through and tear down of the Helltech wireless capsule and in a later video I'll be testing out the performance of them. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time.